at the analysis. Elizabeth Kendall is a senior research fellow in Arabic and Islamic studies at Pembroke College, uh, Oxford. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, this is in many ways then a new front in the war, but in many ways as well an old argument. Yes, that's right, Mark. It's a new front opening up now in this current war, but as your report laid out, it has old roots and they go back decades. Yemen as a united country is an awkward concept. It only united in 1990 and already in 1994, just four years later, the North and the South were embroiled in a civil war. So unless the grievances of the South, that's political marginalization, economic marginalization, a feeling that their resources are being unfairly distributed in the North and not back towards them. Unless all of that's addressed, then this will never be solved. And at the moment, the international peace efforts are not bringing in the South. So it's not a great surprise to see the Southern Transitional Council taking matters into its own hands. And what role are the Emirates playing in this conflict and, and why? The Emirates entered the conflict with Saudi Arabia in March 2015 in order to push back the perceived influence of Iran, which was held to be backing the Houthi rebels in the north. But very quickly, it changed its focus to the south of Yemen, where the Houthis had already been expelled. So that led to suspicions about what the UAE might be doing in the South. Now, it argues that getting control of the South was necessary for security reasons because the jihad groups that you mentioned are mainly centered in Yemen's South. But by backing a political structure like the Southern Transitional Council and by alongside that recruiting thousands of soldiers in the South, it does look like it's more of a political agenda. And that would fit quite well also with its political agenda and security agenda across the Horn of Africa. It should also be noted that, of course, Yemen's wealth, its oil and its gas and its port revenues are heavenly, heavily concentrated in the South. So suspicions run high as to what UAE's precise motives are. Caught in the middle, of course, are civilians. This is a humanitarian disaster. There's no doubt about that. Um, and in many ways, Yemen being torn apart before the world's eyes. That's right. Yemen is being torn apart. And there's no end in sight. We've spent months now wrangling over a quite limited ceasefire just for the port of Hodeida. And although that's largely held, it hasn't been rolled out to the rest of Yemen. And meanwhile, people in other areas, particularly in the south, are getting impatient. They want to have a say in Yemen's future too. And the sooner more inclusive peace talks can happen, the better, because right now we're in a situation where about 24 million Yemenis are in need of some kind of humanitarian assistance. And the UN is having to close down programmes owing to a lack of funding. So it does actually look like things are going to get worse before they get better. Elizabeth Kendall, thank you very much for your analysis. A senior Research Fellow in Arabic and Islamic Studies at Pembroke College at Oxford University. Thank you very much indeed.